Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the After Effect Podcast. I am your host, LeBron Stephan, but you can call me LB, LBZ, L Boogie, Big Brian, Brian Brian, B Ron, Bronnie, whatever you choose. Welcome to episode 35 of the After Effect Podcast. We have a very, 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 very special guest. Nico Law is on the show today. Uh, DC native, attended the University of Iowa first, where we were teammates for a few years, played in 38 games there with four starts, ended up transferring to Towson University where he finished off his career, had a short CFL stint, and is now a entrepreneur and business owner of his own fitness brand, Law Fit. That's Law Mentality. Uh, just sent him the link, so excited for him to jump on. And we will go in. Okay, that's, my God, what to do, baby? That's that. That's law. That's law. <laughs> What's good, bro? How you doing? Camera up, man. I like your <laughs> background. Oh, yeah. looking? Hey, hey, man. Little, little sauce, little sauce. You know. <laughs> How that light look? That look cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The light, the light is great, man. How you been, dog? I've been, I've been great, bro. Yeah, yeah same here. Same here, man. Uh, so, like I was telling you, man, the ethos of the podcast, I call it the After Effect Podcast. I feel like all of us as athletes, you you know, we got 20 plus years of athletic experience. We all have an after effect. We all have an aftershock from the wins and the losses yeah. and the racism and the politics and the injuries and all that stuff. Yeah. So, this is a platform for us to kind of relive our journey, talk talk about some truths, uh, you know, some good times, some bad times, but kind of really just try to push the culture forward and kind of heal, you know, from, from our, from our journey as well. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, um, before we dive into your childhood, man, let me get to your take on just a couple current events. I know, we, <laughs> you know, we favor athletes. Who, who do you have winning the Super Bowl this year and why? I, I think it's like week 13. So we, we getting close to the playoffs. Hey, I'm, I'm going to keep you, look, I'm about to shock you. I don't even keep up no more, chant. I really don't. <laughs> look, games. Yeah. And then I watched, we, we all got teammates that still play, so I just right, watched, right. paid attention, yeah. and keep it. So I'm kind of like out of the mix. I know I know the Chiefs team, you know, every time I watch the Chiefs, right, they right, would right. travel, you feel me? Yeah. Then I got uh, the Steelers, they've been dogging my Ravens, bro. They, you know, shout out to Joe Hayden, you know, DMV yeah. native. Yeah. Thank out. You know, got my boy Chico out there from, we got a lot of Maryland cats doing their thing, but yeah, I, I don't really keep up, for real. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you you know, we got a couple of homies on the Chiefs, uh, a couple of Hawkeyes, Anthony Hitchens and Ben Neiman, and then yeah. uh, uh, Frank Clark, the Pro Bowl DN from the Chiefs, he went to my high school and he played in the Big Ten, played at Michigan. So I've okay. always, I've always kind of gravitated towards the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, tight end for them. Uh, he's a Cleveland guy. We actually played against each other in basketball in high school. So, I, well, I, you know, I watched him closely. I'm from Cleveland, so I, I'm a Browns fan to the death, man. Uh, I, I actually think we got y'all next week, so that so 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 that that should that should be a good battle. <laughs> a good battle. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, we not. And hey, we. And hey, we nine and three. We nine and three, baby. The Ray. We 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 all like we shot six and five. What's going on? <laughs> hey, look, man. <laughs> How it is, man. They were studying my man real good. <laughs> yeah, you know that. You know that. <laughs> oh, they had a stop or somebody was gonna get fired. You hear me? Right, 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 right. Yeah. But he he took over the league. So let me let me let me ask you this, bro. How have you grown spiritually, mentally, physically in the last nine months? Obviously, since we've been on this earth, we've never been yeah. through a pandemic. We've never saw the world shut down. We've never had to pivot in so many different ways. Uh, you know, what, what What has been your anchor during this time? Nine months, man. Uh, so, you know, just like sports, you just got to adapt to any environment. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. things that I think going to happen, how it's supposed to happen. You know, I'm a trainer, you know, so like, most of my income was coming from, you know, training in gyms. The gyms got shut, shut down. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you got to, you know, regroup, pivot, and always have multiple streams of income. So I'm in three different, you know, fields. And I try to create at least seven streams of income within those fields. So, mm -hmm. trainer, but I got you know, I got my own uh, merchandise. Mm -hmm. I got my apparel. Mm -hmm. uh, you got YouTube. 
Mm-hmm. You got, you know, subscriptions online. Mm-hmm. Um, so many different things, bro, that you can, you know, make uh, monetary gains off of exactly. and provide. Stuff. But the biggest thing I did learn, and I told, you know, all my friends, man, that, that job, and that ain't going to satisfy you. You got to mm-hmm. have something for yourself. So exactly. I'm so ownership. Mm-hmm. Like everything I touch, <laughs> everything I promote, bro, yeah. I own something. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like Jay-Z, Rick Ross, you feel me? Yeah. And I'm yeah. just sadly when it comes to health and wellness. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I can, uh, I can attest to that, you know, when the pandemic hit. It definitely made me, uh, you know, boss my thinking up, if that makes sense, really just yeah. kind of, kind of try to like uh, identify what I'm passionate about and then just figure out ways that I can monetize from it. And I, I mean, I think we all going to, you know, come out of this as better men, as better humans with, with a better business acumen and just, and, and just all that stuff, man. Facts. And you, and you kind of remind me of a guy like myself, like, you don't seem like you just do stuff for the money. Like me, I can't just make money on something I don't like. Mm-hmm. I got right. passionate about it. So if you ever see me doing any type of business it's because passionate about what I'm doing and right. it's making for other human beings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Right. And, and, and I think, you know, that, that's, that, that's why we all here. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of like what, what, what Nip said, Nipsey also, God bless the dead, you know, the, the highest human act is to inspire, man. So I'm, I'm, I definitely, I definitely talk that language, man. Uh, yeah. So next, next, next current event, bro, what is your take or give me your reaction on, uh, you know, all the information and the news and the racial disparities that kind of came out uh, during the summer at the University of Iowa. Obviously, you didn't graduate there, but you did play in 38 games with five starts. You gave a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to that program. Um, you know, you, you were a little younger than me, so you could give me more of an inside look. I, I mean, to be honest, I thought that James Daniels had a lot of courage and a lot of just kind of unapologetically being him with, with him starting that tweet saying that it was a lot of racial disparities. And then simultaneously after that, 63, it ended up being 63 uh, former players coming out with individual stories on not being treated right, uh, you know, being treated badly within that program. I graduated from there and put five years into that program. You put basically four, almost five, uh, you know, you transfer at the, uh, before your senior year, but a lot of blood, sweat, and tears started strong safety for the university. Just give me your take and your reaction when all that was happening uh, over the summer. Man, I'm going to start by saying, man, shout out to James, man. He made a history champ. Exactly. And <laughs> say is, man, look, over the years, this has been going on for, for many, many years, but it mm-hmm. took somebody that actually was in the NFL field to, to say something. Because if it's a guy like me saying something, it's like, oh, he's just hating. Exactly. Because he ain't in the league. Exactly. He just, you know, to, to throw dirt on, a, you know, the U- University of Iowa. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's not- mm-hmm. so, you know, um, when I was there, it was a lot of different things, you know, just how they treated mo- the majority of the minorities that was there. Mm-hmm. We had separate rules. Bro, I was getting drug tested every week, chat. I'm talking yeah. about, look, I'm a 3.0 student. Nah, stop. Uh, why am I on the random list every week, chat? Right, you feel right, me? Right. Or just like guys kicked out for their hairstyles. Guys was getting kicked out for their hairstyles. Bro, I didn't got kicked out of a I didn't got kicked out of a, uh, a workout for y'all. I'm talking about it's 6 a.m. You know, it's time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You come, <laughs> Oh, man. get the fuck out! <laughs> Yo, that's black. crazy. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, you feel I'm me? I'm telling so, you, that culture man, was crazy. Man, it was crazy, bro. It was so crazy, bro. Then, like, especially if you was a guy like me, you like, oh, one, one thing, you know, I got, I gotta give you a shout out. Hey, you got some of the coldest tattoos I've seen, chat. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> so, look, you know, the brothers getting inked up, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They looking at you like a thug, you know. Every yeah. time I get a tattoo, or whatever, to express myself, my individuality, exactly, or my faith, um, it was like he's a thug or earrings and jewelry, bro. It was just so much, bro. And it's I'm like telling you. it's not to have on a kid that's like you eighteen, seventeen, right. some guy like you know late sixteens coming to college, right and. Oh, just a culture shock, bro. It, bro, Iowa, bro, really beat most of these black men down to a pulp. I'm telling you. Know? you. And, and, and it, a lot of these guys still haven't recovered today because me mm-hmm. personally, 
I always been expressing. I was like, oh, show single champ. Yeah. I'm expressing myself. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tell you. You came, you came in with a lot of hype too. You had you you, you had a big following yeah. on Twitter and all that. <laughs> you feel me? Came in with the hype, the juice. You feel me? That boy had yeah. that juice. You feel yeah. me? But it, I in myself, it wasn't like I'm over here trying to you know shit on anybody else or belittle other people. Right. It's more, hey, I'm from the DMV. This is my culture. My culture is a fast life. My right. culture. Right. Those. Stand up for yourself, right. you know. And so then you come to the Iowa. It's like total, total different. Hey, are you expressing yourself? You, know? <laughs> you get the you get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm looking at the brothers like, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, hey. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm telling you, and it's, and it's funny. Uh, uh, like you said, it's crazy that it took somebody like James James, a guy that actually made it with a big platform. Where people would say, oh, okay, he said this, so let's listen. Because as you know, this is all that we talked about amongst each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? At the apartments or in the dorms. This is all we talked about. We knew for years that it was racial disparities, that there was a lot of unfair shit going on. But we didn't know how to say it without, like you say, looking like a problem or looking like we hating on the university or looking like, you know what I mean? Because because people wouldn't believe us. And then it's a double-edged sword, man. You come from a... You know, I come from an environment, bro. I only came to Iowa to go to NFL, champ. Exactly. I, I come from an environment in which this was my opportunity to change the generation of my family. Right. So you in a situation at Iowa, you're like, man, I can't mess this up. Right, right. You don't want to do nothing to mess it up. <laughs> you ain't trying to do nothing to mess it up. And then when you go there, I never forget my, my freshman year. I mean, a guy like Jordan Burns. Oh, my. God, <laughs> two twenty four three seven. Yeah, I mean, animal. Yeah, <laughs> Bruce, your man, Bruce. Hey, yeah. Bruce, y'all did, man. I love you, man. Yeah. Shout out there. Yes, hey, sir. Bruce Davis is straight, just this dog bro, mentality. I, coming in as a freshman, bro. And I'm seeing some some guys that was on a on a bench, and most of them was black. Mm. And I'm looking at them like, how? Yeah, these guys are clearly better than the guys they start. I mean, exactly. That's starting in front of them. Right. These guys got that it factor. These guys, wow. These guys are just straight football players. And these guys are the guys that's like football or die. I'm t- exactly. <laughs> football was the way out. <laughs> that's like, hey, you know, Pop just gave, you know, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, feel, you know, Coach Ferris and them. Woo, woo, bro, woo. bro, like, bro, I tell, I tell guys all the time and people don't understand. A lot of Iowa fans, that's what kind of what I feel like they didn't understand. And maybe they got a better understanding now. It's like, like when you, when those coaches come into these inner cities, like you say, DC, Cleveland, and and recruit us, man, it is it's literally our way out. We not coming from a small town in Iowa where our parents own, you, well, where, yeah. our, where our parents like own a company or own a business, and and we grew, we we grow up Hawkeye fans, and we just want to play for, for the Hawkeyes. We Hawkeyes, we don't care about going to the NFL. That's kind of the, that's kind of the vibe that you get from guys that's kind of from Iowa, but. Our 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 culture is not like that. Like we come in here, like you say, we come in the Iowa City to get to it, to get an education, but to ultimately make it to the NFL to change our family's lives. Yeah, bro. I, I never forget. Uh, I don't even want to put his name out there, man. You know what I'm saying? One of my safeties, you know, he just happened to be, you know, of a uh, uh, a lighter color or uh-huh. white, is what say. Yeah. And um, I never forget. I'm like, bro, what you gonna do? Like, you don't make the league? Woo, woo. We we talking and stuff. He's like. Dude, my family, my family got multiple businesses. We just worked for my father. I'm like, what? Yeah. Business? Yeah. We don't, we, don't, we don't even talk that language. <laughs> <laughs> Business? I'm like, what, what is that? <laughs> I'm like, Chad, ain't no what if I don't make it. I got to make it. I will make it. Exactly. So entirely like, bro, I, 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 I didn't really, Honestly, thinking back, like, yeah, I had fun in college, mm-hmm. but I didn't have as much fun because I had so much pressure on me. It was mm-hmm. more. So many fun. restrictions, handcuffs, handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be, you, you can't be yourself. And, and, and that's actually a big thing for me. I felt like I was even, even like you, we already know we couldn't be ourselves outside of, outside of football. We couldn't wear earrings in the building. We couldn't wear hats. We couldn't play loud rap music. It's all that kind of like- stuff. Yeah, Dang. yeah, yeah, yeah. All that you got, you yep. couldn't, couldn't talk your slang. But then, even on the field, I feel like I was handcuffed. I couldn't go uh-huh. out there. I couldn't go out there and be me, which was super athletic, do spin moves and do different things that that the coaches didn't right. teach. They really, they really handcuff you 
and try to limit limit you, especially if you can do a lot of things that they can't coach. Hey, fact. Hey, look. So check this out. It's this. Uh, I don't want to say word for word, but I'm pretty sure it's Gilbert Arenas, and he was talking about coaches. How coaches, you know, when you got a a player, bro, he like a dog. Mm -hmm, Some of these mm -hmm. dogs natural talents, but when you try to coach, 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 right. twenty four restricting right. him. Right. There was a lot of guys that came to 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 University of Iowa with so many different abilities. Like you. like Mark, he was a he, no, not not uh, not Marvin. You know, who 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 went from receiver to quarterback? Was it Brad? Uh oh, you talking about Brad Bank? Are you talking about no. Cam that Marvin went from quarterback to yeah. receiver. Yeah, Marv came in as a quarterback. He was in my class and then he he switched to receiver. Exactly. It was all these guys, right? You yeah. come to my city or you come home and you preach to me that I'm going to be such and such as this position, lying yeah. to me, and you already have the game plan for when I land, you know, at the school. And it's certain instincts that we got. So me me on the field, bro, I talk my shit, bro. Like, all right, right, right. You know, that's bro, how we do. I'm, so I'm an energy guy. You Look, yeah. just right now, bro, you give me energy, right? So, <laughs> so when right. we on the you give me energy. Oh, I'm getting hype. You know that. Me, calm down, relax. It's too much, buddy. Just right. Tone it down. Tone it bit. down. Right. You walking like you got a dick in your ass. You all stiff. You all exactly. You and that's you, and you, and, you, and that's that that's the Iowa culture. Iowa <laughs> culture. Yeah. Not understanding. You feel me? And and it's just you know. Yeah. It's just a lack of awareness. Yeah. Exactly. A super lack of awareness. And at this point, man, you know, since, since we're a lot older, for one, one, I'm I'm glad that all those guys came out with their individual stories. But two, it it really sit, looks and seems like they're making changes to the university. I, I saw a video a couple weeks ago that got like the guys they they able to wear earrings during the games now. Yeah, they got, they, 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 got, <laughs> they, they got visors. They got they they they, they got they got hair. Yeah, however, they want to have. I saw a video guy swag surfing and dancing in the locker room after the game and getting to it. I say, I had to watch that like four times, bro. I say, man, oh, so they, oh, they, they took the handcuffs off for sure. <laughs> hey, look, we, hey, look, we, we in that joke, we so fucking high. Right, we right. So, <laughs> hey, like, hey, all the brothers looking like, come on, bro. Come right, on, bro. right. That ain't, that ain't even our steez, you know what I mean? <laughs> our steez had to do what she had to do. Yeah. Oh, look, look, we, when we was in the locker room, not locker room, we in the weight room. We getting it in. It's weightlifting day, right? Mm -hmm, so weightlifting mm -hmm. day, I need to listen to my shit. I need it's, to listen to some, you, you some future. It. Hey, it's, we it's about exactly. to back. Exactly. They got the country music on. They got, the you know? they got the same country playlist playing nonstop. Hey, look, you, you tell Coach, hey, Coach, hey, look, I'm about to get my uh, max. Hey, can, can I just play one song real quick? You no, know I mean? you, know I mean? you, you need that one song to get, get that extra rep. <laughs> hey bro <laughs> hey bro so uh last current event question before you dive into your childhood man i know i know and, I, and i've been following you for years and i know that you're big on books and I, I i've been super big on books as well tell me some some of your current reads right now man what, what you what, what you thumb, what you what you thumbing through currently all right hold on let me give me give me a second real quick let me step off the camera we got one i got so you. look me personally, bro, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I read a lot of books. So my father, he was in jail for 16 years, in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. um, my stepfather, I ain't grew up in the nice, the nicest uh, home environment, a lot of domestic abuse and violence and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. me growing up, I always hung out with guys that was older than me because mm -hmm. I always yearned for information. Yeah. So it's like, I'm 12 years old, I'm hanging out with guys 19, you yeah. feel me? Because yeah. I'm trying. Earn. I'm trying to understand, you know, what it means to be, be a man yeah. and learn the things I do not know. So as I get older, um, I say the biggest thing it started, it started really, I had my midlife crisis um, after I got cut from uh, Canada and I had surgery okay. and I was, I, fucked, I was, I was in a um, hospital for two years with two broken shoulders, right? Okay. So at that time, you got a lot of time thinking, you depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just, reading books. I started to deal with all my emotions, mm -hmm. head on, trying to understand my emotions, yeah. like, so I, like emotional intelligence. Yeah, I want to understand more about finance because at the end of the day, you go to these big schools, they rape you of your education. When I was at Iowa, they raped me of my education. Mm -hmm. Every kid there, I came in there as a pre-med major. What are you doing? 
Yeah. Come on out. No, we African American studies. It'd be a good, good education. Yeah. Communication yeah. Major. You know, like these are not things that after football is going to prepare exactly. pre prepare you for real life. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I didn't know about credit cards. I didn't know about finance and investing. So many different things. So I just started reading books. Right now, this is one of the books I'm reading right now. Uh, Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. Okay. Um, I did Laws of Power by Robert yeah. Greene. Yeah. Um, Jordan B. Peterson, 12 Rules oh, uh, for Life. Yeah. I read entrepreneurship books, a lot of books about spirituality. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of books about understanding trauma because mm -hmm. you're uh, what you, um, all the things that happened in, in your past life. I mean, like when you're a lesson, you're a young kid. Yeah. As you yeah. grow up, you keep those same habits. Yeah. So if you don't you don't break those cycles, you keep doing the same stuff. You're, you're gonna redistribute. Yep. Yep. You gotta really like teach yourself to you gotta unlearn what you are already taught. And that's the hardest thing in life. We we talk <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, that was a couple of months ago. I, I told you, I told you, I had told you about that book I read from Humble the Poet called Unlearn. Exactly. Um, yeah, and and that was the whole gist of that book. And you know, like you say, man, nine out of ten guys, man, if you grew up in any inner city, whether there's the DMV, whether there's Cleveland, whether there's Detroit, Chicago, Miami, wherever, you you've been through some traumatic stuff. You've been through some stuff that that's not normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, Real, you probably seen shootouts, seen I'm people get robbed. I'm telling you, at, beat all up, that and, stuff. All. and then you think it's normal. And then exactly. when you go to Iowa, I know, I know this happened to you, bro. Okay, it happened to me. When I went to Iowa, bro, I was scared more than back home. For real? Because why? Yeah. <laughs> I no gunshot, no hell. Like, oh, it's quiet. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a weird feeling almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, for for me. That transition, it took me like, I got there in August. It took me about four to five months to feel comfortable, right? Because like you say, you know what I'm saying? We from the inner city. So I never even went to school with no white people. I, I maybe had a couple of white teachers, but going from that kind of environment to Iowa City, where like you say, it's 98% white. It's a total different environment. I had to kind of change how I talk because a lot of people, a lot of uh, people that I would, that would meet, yeah. they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't even understand what I was trying to say. Yeah. My lingo, my ver you know how we talk in Cleveland is, is kind of different. We, you know, we sound a little different. So I kind of had to like, had Close. to, like, yeah, 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 like make like make my verbiage a little more proper, uh, articulate. articulate a little different. And it took me months to kind of, you know, what I'm saying, get comfortable. Uh, but yeah, man, it, you know, book, books are so powerful. I, I'm gonna have to tap into those two books that you that you showed me. Uh, right now, right now, I'm reading. Um, Success is not an accident. I'm big on ebooks because I'm always on the go. So even if I got 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to just tap in on my phone. But right now... You got, you got to tap in with the audio books too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've listened to a few audio books. Um, I try to do that like when I'm working out or like or doing my cardio. Uh, okay. But yeah, Success is Not an Accident by, by, by Tommy New, Newberry. That's a great one so far. Just really, it, it, it's really just structuring like how you can... Uh, mold yourself into anything that you want, anything that you want to do, any successful endeavor you want to do, you can mold yourself into that. And then uh, the Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And that's more so, like you said, that was talk like you were talking about earlier, the trauma, going through traumatic experiences, figuring out how to navigate through that to make sure you don't redistribute that pain and that stuff that you saw. Because a lot of times that's what we do when we're not conscious of it and do the, and, and we don't do the work. We don't even notice it, but we really redistribute it to the next to our next generation, or our kids, and we don't even know we're doing it. Facts. Yeah. A, a crazy thing about these books, man. Um, we're such we're so blessed right now because our ancestors used to get hung for reading books. So mm -hmm. me as a black man, you know, that's my my uh, what do you call it? Uh, form of of love when yeah. I send books to you. So you know, I was sending you books, man. Yeah. Hey, look. I'm a trainer. I sent all my clients books first day when they start training with Nico Law. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's like, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's like you say, man. It's powerful, man. And, and you know how the saying go: if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in the book. So we gotta, we get, we gotta, we we gotta open those joints up and really thumb through as much as we can, man. For sure. Nah, that's so I, I talk that language. Uh, so yeah. yeah, man. DC, DC native. Give me kind of kind of give me an inside look on what it was like growing up in DC. I know, I know when I visited there, it's, it's like kind of like a weird thing because 
Baltimore <laughs> is so close and Virginia is so close and yeah. D- and DC is like so close to all that stuff, but it's still really big and, and it seems like it's a lot of black empowerment as well. So just kind of give me like an inside look on what it was like growing up there. So check this out, born DC, raised in uh, Prince George's County. So I grew up in Washington, DC. On Northeast Adams Street, you know? then after that, I uh, moved out of Prince George's County. Uh, for most of my life, I've been probably like around Clinton for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's called a DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. So DC, then you got uh, the M stands for Maryland, but it's mostly like Prince George's County, mm-hmm. um, Metropolitan, you know. Then after that, you got Northern Virginia. So okay. everything really like 20, 30 minutes apart. Mm-hmm. But the attitude and the DMV is more like gritty. Everybody's very intense, angry, because yeah. it's a city life. It's yeah. fast. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. People are you know, very direct. We don't like like to like beat around a bus. We yeah. what you say? Like what? Right, 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 right. What do you mean by that, you feel me? Yeah. But other places like moving to LA. They gonna beat around the bush, you feel me? They yeah, yeah. Gonna, it's a it's, it's a total different vibe. <laughs> it's a total different, total different vibe. Um, but yeah, I just say it it was way more like me growing up, way more like chaotic and more mm-hmm. violent because uh you know in the city life people uh what do you call it um not as economically inclined, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the stuff they find is fun a little right. bit more right and that. Right. Um, Form, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but you know, we I grew up in the Go Go's. I went to the Go Go's, right? And the Go Go's, that was my norm. Yeah. There used to be uh shootouts at the Go Go's all the time. Yeah. I thought that was normal until I went to other cities. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, bro, you know how I many people, you know, it sounds so sad, bro. Coming from my environment, bro, I know so many people that died, bro. Point mm-hmm. blank. It, it's a norm. Mm-hmm. I come to LA and, I, and I'm meeting new friends. They like, I've never met a person that died. I might met my best friend died, you know, my sister yeah, died. Yeah, we know we, we know we know a lot of people that pass. It, it's like it's, it's 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 to the point that you just know up. Uh, it's summertime. It's hot. It's about to get you, cracking. Exactly. Right. Somebody uh, missing. Boom, boom, boom. So, as a black person, you always in this constant survival mode and protecting. Oh, no, oh, man, always. You get hit from so many different angles. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. But they were a lot of DMV, bro. That's my home. You feel mm-hmm. me? They they hold me down. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, I wouldn't want to grow up no other place but the DMV. You hear me? Yeah. And it it, made, it's everybody it, express it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 funny you say that because it's like, um, obviously looking back on it, of course, of course, if we if we could do it over again, we would love to to not have to go through those traumatic experiences, see all the things that we saw. But like you growing up in the DMV, me growing up in inner city of Cleveland as well, it's like that stuff kind of shape you and mold you and it it make it make you it makes you tough and it builds tough. it builds your level of like you say a, a adaptability to be able to adapt into whatever environment you know you're in. Um so you know of course we would all want to you know have had a cleaner childhood if that makes sense. But <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it always makes us stronger. And at the end of the day, like 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 we was talking about, is it makes you more susceptible to be able to adapt, man. So that's that's powerful. And then you got that different edge, bro. When you yeah. grow up in the cities, bro, like I came to eye with a chip on my shoulder. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Fact. you ain't take none that's on my plate. Yeah. Like you feel me? It's just a different like yeah. you know, getting out the mud. You feel exactly, me? So, exactly. All at, at all times, man. So if, if you can, if you can remember it all, talk about when you kind of started to really, really come into your own around what, like 13, 14, uh, you know, you, you went to high school, you started having some success. You started getting those letters in the mail. The, the recruiting started to kind of pick up and things like that. If you could, if you could remember that time, you know, in your life, kind of give me some details on that. All right. So check this out. I grew up a Ravens fan. So I used to, you know, watch my man Jamal Lewis running them over, Ray Lewis, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We could stack Derek Mason, you know what I'm saying? Good old Steve McNair days, you know, all yeah. that stuff, right? And um, I always wanted to be like Ray Lewis as a leader. Yeah. And then always admire Ed Reed. Yep. And Sean Taylor was just an icing on the cake, you feel yeah. me? Yeah, you yeah. You know, like, my parents, um, you know, they 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 work nine to fives. Mm-hmm. So I could do sports. So I always played throwback tackle. 
Mm -hmm. So I really, really get to have my opportunity to play football until, until high school. Mm -hmm. So freshman year. So my freshman year, I'm like, I'll I be crushing on a throwback tackle. I'll be crushing it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You playing on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, but I now that got to play like organized football for a front. So I got to uh, high school. Yeah. They signed up for a lot of stuff, but nobody was able to take me to the games and stuff like that. Yeah. So when high school came, it was like, it's over with. I'm about to be the next Ray. In my head, I thought it would be like the next Ray Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> so, next Ray Lewis. so they had me out. I was small, bro. I'm like, Six feet, one twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> young, young, young boy, young, young and neat. Sticking bones, you feel me? Watch <laughs> me, in, man. I rolled a bench. Um, I didn't, I didn't have no football knowledge, no football IQ, because mm -hmm. I never really. Um, yeah, you hadn't played. I wasn't molded. You feel yeah. me? So I, but I was always fast. Mm -hmm. they tell me, hey, run that way as fast as you can to catch the ball. <laughs> That's what I did. I was smoking young, but I rode a bench. Yeah. And I always knew, I always knew I was a star, bro. Like, I always thought highly of myself. You feel me? Like, I always found it like in my head, I won't let the next person I work me. So then my sophomore year, you know, I was a star. I was a star linebacker and yeah. star receiver. Matter yeah. of fact, like I said, I played football like that. I just played throwback tackle, star receiver. Star linebacker, had all the tackles, all the touchdowns, all the yards. Yeah. And from there on, I knew it. I, I knew, you know what I'm saying, I was kind of like the chosen one. I knew yeah, I was yeah, the, yeah, you knew you was on your way. Everybody on the team, they've been playing since they were six. Yeah. And they were superstars, and I'm crushing them, you feel me? Right. <laughs> so talk about, like, when um, maybe, maybe like, your junior, uh, after your junior season, when you started to hear it from schools, what were your top three schools, and then – what ultimately went into your decision to pick the Hawkeyes over, over everyone else? All right, so let's talk about college first. So I, you know, come up, none of my family members really went to college. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? Same here, same here. Uh, even a thing for me, I was just going to school because I had to go to school. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I got to get a job and figure out just real life stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom was like, yeah, if you want to go to college, you got to make it work. So what really gave me that inspiration was, after my sophomore year, a um, uh, shout out to Coach Bevel, shout out to uh, Coach Chapman. Mm -hmm. They set me aside and was like, "Look, dude, if you take this serious, you can you can go to school for free." <laughs> things that ever came, you know, came from this area. Yeah. You got in my head. It's like these guys, forty some years old, they know more than me. I don't know nothing. You mm -hmm. you know how it is, bro. When you're exactly. in a situation that you oh, don't yes. know your potential, you don't right. know. Right. <laughs> so, I trusted that man, and I said, dang, he must know some, so I'm going to just listen. Mm -hmm. So I listened, got my grades up, bro. I had like a 1.6, got my grades up, flipped it to three, three something, you feel me? And then um, junior year, they put me at safety. Mind of fact, I ain't never played safety. Yeah. I never covered a person day in my life. All, all, I, all I knew was I was Ray Lewis all the way in the back. <laughs> right. Back field, coming down, like, God, God. Yeah, <laughs> going crazy with the bro. energy, smacking he, shit. Hey, hey, look, I never forget, bro. First play, I came down here. They said, "Yup, yeah, yup." Yeah. And we we was playing at uh, the school called Suitland, bro. I, bro, I was, bro, I was second string, bro. I was pissed. I, uh, I think Coming I messed up over, and um, they had me on the bench, and then I got cleared. Got mm -hmm. cleared away, bro. I swear, bro. They put me in the game. I had four big hits. First back, one, yeah. Back, back to back. I'm talking back about to back. back. Coming from all the way half the field, run it, bro. Running, run running through shit. <laughs> bro, I'm talking laying them out, bro. I'm talking about on Sean Taylor type stuff. Yeah. You feel? Yeah. And that yeah. day, that star was born, and I knew it was up. But yeah, my first scholarship um was from NC State, and I never forget that day. Uh, my coach said, "Hey." um, I got somebody I want to talk to you, you know, come step in my office, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you want to talk to me? Because I wasn't really thinking about colleges. Right. And got on the phone. It was a random guy. I, for I forgot his name. But it was a guy he got on the phone. Um, he just said, hey, hey, Nico, uh, uh, how, how would you feel to be a Wolfpack? And I'm yeah. like, 
in my head, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> like, what fact? NC State is that point get four ride scholarship to play football. My Rogers broke down and cried, bro. I, I can I, only imagine, bro. I was like that when I got my first offer, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, because it's like it was surreal. It's like me. Yeah. yeah. All these guys have played their whole life. They got yeah. trophies. I ain't yeah. got nothing but just heart. Yeah. Me? Yeah. yeah. I was the biggest. I just had, you know what I'm saying? Like a different type of aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, so and then, I, go ahead. Hmm. Oh no, no, so go ahead. And NC State came. My coach was like, yeah, so this is how college work. Once you get one, it's monkey see, monkey do. Right. Everybody in that conference going to start. They start rolling in. <laughs> I offer. But my number one school, bro, I lied to you now. My number one school, bro, I always want to go to University of Miami. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we grew did, up. <laughs> did, 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 did Miami recruit that area, that, that area, the DMV area? Man, so when they was recruiting me, so the thing about my recruiting year, it was a lot of stuff going going on with college. That's when all the coaches were getting fired. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through a lot of term oil with uh, um, all these, you know, planter players under the table mm -hmm. and all the other crazy stuff that yeah. they, they, they weren't O eligible okay. and stuff like that. And I told my coach, I'm like, bro, I don't kid. I'm, I'm – <laughs> That's where I grew up. I grew up watching of course. all them you know, hot players come from yep. University of Miami. U Same University of Miami back then was like, what, Alabama? Yeah. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. And um, he used to tell me, he used to be like, Lick, listen, he, around this area, you want to want. You can go to University of Miami. It's like five room jokes. I'm <laughs> like, you on the team. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True story. So, so I ended up, I actually ended up getting an offer um, a week before um, signing day because the Temple coach left from Temple. Um, I wasn't that Golden. I think he left from Temple. Then he ended up going to University of Miami. He gave me an offer at Temple. I'm like, man, I ain't going to the hood. <laughs> I, I, I'm right. trying to go, you know what I'm saying, where it's Sunday. Right. So he ended up going to uh, – University of Miami, he, he he offered me, but my coach ain't tell me he offered me to protect me, which I feel like that was messed up to this day. That's that's messed up. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, okay. So so they, they offered you closer to sign today, and so you you ultimately ended up going to the Hawks. Now, when you uh, came to Iowa City, obviously I, I was there. I think it was either my junior or senior year, and uh, you know, obviously we you know we we we, we hit it off the bat. Just from yeah. you know, we we from the same culture and, and we saw yeah, that yeah. and we we could kind of see that, you know, from, from day one. So how was your transition? What what how what do you feel like your transition was coming from the DMV to Iowa City? I mean, we obviously we oh. was tight, we was tight, we was teammates. Um, but I just remember my transition was, was hard. It took me four to five months to kind of get comfortable being in a predominantly white uh culture and being in a predominantly white city. So mm -hmm. from the outside looking in, because I don't think if I can remember right, you, you didn't register. Like, you, you was on special teams your, your freshman year, right? Yeah, yeah, I played as true freshman. Okay, yeah, yeah. So just talk about your transition, uh, you know, and, and just try to re relive that if you can. Okay, so um, you said it took you like four to six months, bro. It probably took me like eight to 12. It took me like a whole year. <laughs> it's the freshman thing I ever did, bro. Just like yeah. you said, just culture shock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an environment that, like, I ain't talked to the white girls in school like that, you know what I'm saying, back home because the DMV, Chocolate City, is not with black people. So yeah, yeah. trying to communicate to the opposite, uh, what do you call race, or different types of races was very, it, 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 it was, was odd. odd. It was odd, yeah, it was odd. weird, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then um, every situation from school, so you got, you got, you never mess with white woman to now you trying to mess, you know, you, you got it. It got to get off you somehow, you feel me? <laughs> right. <laughs> it got to get off somehow. Right. So that situation, then you, in back of your head, you got the stereotype that, like, white woman claim rape and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, man, my mama, you know what I'm saying, told me that. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Man, it's it's a weird thing. I be trying to tell people. <laughs> yeah, you get on TV. Yeah. Then after that, you, you know, then that, uh, in Iowa, they give me us all these talks. A no is a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, be careful, that's all that kind of stuff. If she's drunk, that's a no. I'm like, dang, what I got to sign off every time I get something, you feel me? <laughs> right. 
definitely, uh, definitely overwhelming, bro. Especially like being in class. I'm the only black piece of chocolate in the whole class. Exactly. And they talk about topics on race, and you like, right, right, right. And then every you, time someone in there, you like, Nico, you got something to say about that? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know what I'm saying? It's awkward, well, 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 of course I got something to say. I'm the only black you motherfucker know, in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it's just you start to realize, too, as you, the more and more you at eye, where you're like, dang, just like I ain't never seen no white folks like this, you know, from um, uh, as far as like quantity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. same as them. They've never seen such a capacity. Right, of right, so, right their perception of you is everything they seen on TV from BT, from MTV. So mm -hmm. you walking down the street, they walking to the opposite side of the street. You like, bro, what the you know what right. I'm saying? Right. You you talking to a girl, she already got perceived notions of what you might do and mm -hmm. it won't do, but it's not true. You feel me? Right. Culture shop was huge, but and then and then the food was way different, man. You know, we back home we season it up, spice it up. Food was real bland, you know. <laughs> so it tastes like food was bland in Iowa City. Yeah, it, it, was, it was terrible. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I I can you know I can attest to all that, man. Like like I said, I I did the best that I could, and it it, it took me some months to get comfortable, you know, in that space. And like you said, it took you you know, closer to a year to get comfortable, man. I always felt like that transition was minimized. People just expect us to come from inner city and just transition so easy. But those transitions are, are those transitions are tough and, and, until you feel comfortable like every day, you know, in that space. It's, it's tougher it's than what big, people really know. I, I never really got to feel that comfort. So it took me a year, right? But during that year process, I lost myself. Yeah. I went I'm pretty excited again. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? To like, yeah, yeah. Hey, right, right, yeah. right, right. I can't, like, I can't be swag geek. I can't be energetic because that, because they, because they don't like that. They don't want me to be that way. Yeah, yeah. Like you go to you. Do, What's good, brother? <laughs> right. They're like, whoa, what is that? You like, oh my bad. Hey, brother. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man. And and and, and it's crazy because because. That's really what happened. Like for you, for you to conform to that kind of culture, oh natu nat naturally you're gonna lose yourself. You're gonna lose who you lose really are. <laughs> yeah. Lose everything, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, man. Yeah. Facts. So uh talk about man, just your decision to uh transfer from the University of Iowa in 2014. I know you, I, I know you had like an incident or whatever, and then did like did Farron, did did Kirk like force you out or did he like insinuate that like hey if you stay you're not gonna play so you probably should like go somewhere else hey chat we grown now look i have no problem to tell you the real deal holy yeah. deal yeah so first of all i got it so if anybody know me it takes a lot for me to put my hands on somebody you feel me i was in a situation up there in the middle of the time and um basically we was walking to iowa city as a teammate who just recently passed, you know, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? We grown, mm -hmm. um, uh, but he put his hands on my girl, tried to like sexually assault her. Mm -hmm. I spazzed off, boom, you know, yeah, it yeah, got yeah. Yeah. me. Uh, he ended up telling, the, you know, I tried to go home, he ended up telling the police who I was. I got all this in paperwork, you feel me? Yeah. Ended up telling the police who I was, boom, they arrest me, went to jail, they gave me disorderly conduct. Um, you know, I was pissed, you feel me? And then he was in a situation in which that uh he was, you know how some some guys live in like the football house. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of isolated. It was just me and my man, you feel me? Yeah. And I was li I was living with Jake Hillier. So me yeah. and Jake Hillier, and you know, we roomed up together. Yeah. And then he lived in a, a house of like eight people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he go tell his story to everybody. This and that happened, blah, 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 throw his little sauce on it or whatever, which yeah. wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the crazy guy, like, he goes yeah. to punch him hard just with, like. Right, so, right, right. Try to, put that, try to put that negative na narrative on you. Yeah, you feel me? So yeah. then after that, um, you know, me, I end up, actually end up breaking my thumb, bro. I swear I had a, the day before um, I got in a fight, I had my tattoo appointment the day after 
I was in jail with a broken thumb. Um, they gave me disorderly conduct. When I got out of jail, I was embarrassed. I'm like, man, I crushed dude, broke my thumb. I'm out here looking weak. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm stressed out. Then you know how it is with the black people. Let's keep it real. Like, you at the University of Iowa, ain't mm -hmm. no three strikes shot. <laughs> right. Strike. Right. One you know, strike. I care, if I care about you, we may let you stay off the strike. Right. We may kick you out and... You right. know, that strain, that strain, real thin. That shit, real, that strain, real thin for the black people. Real thin. That joint. Yeah. That joint thin. Yeah. You know it. <laughs> so, um, and at the time, uh, I was already going through it uh, immensely and emotionally. I'm trying to get this starting position because mm -hmm. I started sophomore year mm -hmm. and then sophomore year, and I was just coming into my bag. I already knew junior year was it. Yeah, then I yeah. got my junior year so my yeah. head you feel me yeah and then my sister just died you feel me so i'm going through all types of yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like an emotional roller coaster yeah my sister just died bro you feel yeah. me then i'm this stuff and i never forget i had a meet up with coach parents and it, it was just like you said it was one of these ultimatums like i knew it and and so, it's crazy, you never even told me this, and I already do. I knew it. I knew it was gonna be like an ultimatum situation. Every brother got hit with it. So mm -hmm. so with me, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm I'm DMV cat. I'm exp I'm coming in that joint, not thinking logically, not trying to play chess. I'm like, man, I'm gonna tell you how it is. I'm fucked up. Yeah. He did this, he did this, how I feel, you know, where I'm from this unacceptable, boom, boom, boom. Like yeah. Coach Ferris, what would you do if it was you? Yeah. And he was I would have called the police. So like, your ass would have been sitting on the couch. <laughs> you been sleeping on the couch. Right, right, right. So, you know, so I've been real, you know, my smart mouth probably, you feel me? Yeah. Then after that, um, I said, man, you know what? I accept all responsibilities. You know, um, I put too much blood, sweat, and tears here. So whatever I got to do from here, um, let me know. Because, you know, I came, I came to Iowa solely for one thing. You feel me? This is my situation. Boom, boom, boom. It was like, okay, cool. Uh, well, what did he say? It was one of, I'm trying to think of the word, man. I can't. I think it was like, this This probably isn't the best situation for you. Yeah. It was yeah. one of those, this ain't the best situation for you. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What you like, bro? Blood, sweat, and tears. Like, That's what I'm saying. Four years. Look for other situations because it's not the best one for you. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm like, yo, they about to bench me over a fight. The white guys on the team do crazy wild stuff. I'm they can do what and they and, and they get a second, third, fourth chance. They get 25 chances. So I'm yeah. in this joint baffled. You feel me? Yeah. Now I'm going this emotional, just like, dang man, I was just finesse. Right. Like right. I'm all the way out here for them to just Throw me away like that. So that, then he that that shit hard to deal with, especially mentally. Uh, bro, especially yeah. with like you gotta be a person you not for four years just to try to get to the NFL. Exactly. Exactly. You, got, you, know you 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 holding your tongue a lot. You feel me? Exactly. That's that right. hard. Yeah, very hard. And then um what happened after that, bro? So so then he basically gave me like you know, he basically said, like, yeah, you can stay here, but you ain't playing. So at this situation, I'm 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 tied up for the starting spot with Johnny Loudermilk. Mm -hmm. Now Johnny Hey he good man, shout out Johnny Loudermilk. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is, dog. You feel me? Yeah. But his folks, his family got family ties with, you know, Coach Ferentz, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things going, you know, behind the closed door. It was so bad. Right. Even John came up to me one day. He said, I don't know how I'm starting in front of you, dog. Crazy. I'm looking at Johnny like, oh, oh, oh. He, I'm telling you. Did he say that? I'm telling you. <laughs> and that's and and that's one of the reasons why I made this platform, man, to put this kind of information out. People don't be knowing that the best player don't always play on at the college level. Like you say, it be got guys be having parents who went to the university or they give a bunch of money to the university. And even if they're not the best player, and like you said, he and shout out to Johnny because obviously he's a real one for even telling you that. Like, man, I don't even I don't know how I'm starting, but that shit happens so much, so often. Now, now look, let me tell you how how the, the psychology that affects a, a human being so bad. 
So you you give me your all, right, on the field every day. Mm-hmm. And then you go to the coaches, you ask them, what can you do to get on the field? But they never got an answer for you. Mm-hmm. So now you didn't lost that 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 competitive spirit because you're getting all you got and you just don't understand it's like a glass selling. Mm-hmm. And then I that you going to all your homies like, bro, am I good, bro? I like, what right. and you started you, you start to question yourself. You start to question if you're good enough. I'm not about to gas you up. Shut up. You right. but you really going through it. You like, bro, like I know I'm like that, but maybe I'm just maybe I'm some shit. Right. I I, I, I <laughs> maybe not the guy right. I thought. Like, right, man. you really start to question, like, man, like, am I, like, am I ass? Am I cheeks? Like, or am I like, <laughs> like, am I not good? Have I not, am I not supposed to be here? Yeah. Am I not supposed to be in the Big Ten? You know what I'm saying? But, but that, but like you said, that shit is real. Like, you really start to question yourself when you give your blood, sweat, and tears, and then you see, your, like, you don't, you don't get the revocations for that. You still get hit with the politics and the bullshit and the racism and shit like that. And then, and then instead of like, man, and, and I hate this, man, like, especially all these kids, man, that's, you know, um, for all these, these young black men that's, that's watching this, this video right now, man, like, I'm all about standing, going to the HBCU mm-hmm. and cash on the black community because you guys go to all these schools, man, and they make all these false promises. Like, they make millions off you. Yeah, make millions off you. If I'm a coach, I'm going to tell you. Hey, look, LeBron, hey, it's not it, bro. I'm going to get you to another school, but you ain't going to start because of such, 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 such. There, they don't say that. They just be like, keep going. Right, right, right. They just bullshit you along. You're our, <laughs> hey, hey, they, I know Bernstein heard this before. You're our 12th starter. <laughs> <laughs> all the, 12th man, starter. They, they, they used to tell guys that all the time, man. It's such a political game. Man, I, and, and, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he was, if he was there when you was there. Was Colin Sleeper there when you was there? Uh, hey, bro. Because because, because Colin Sleeper started over over Jordan Bernstein bro. for like three or four games my senior year, and so they finally let him start. Jer- Jordan Bernstein ended up being a draft pick, and he only started bro. like like eight games. Bro, I was there. <laughs> I, I, was- I see. Oh, first hand, front row. Seat. Oh, oh, you you was in the room. Yeah, you you was in the DV room. Hey, Colin, hey, look, brother, I'm just keeping it real, champ. You see yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Keep it real the way you feel. Me. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No disrespect to Colin. He was a great dude, a great human, a great teammate. But we talking about strictly football and skills and skill set. Man, you know what I'm saying? Definitely a great dude. You know what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to Colin. But Colin being in the meeting is like, you can tell he don't want to play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He like, I don't want to play. Put him in. No, you're gonna play. That's how. That, that's how it basically was. Like, no, you're gonna play, Colin. Right. And he had so many chances out of the chance. He just forcing, forcing him. He messed up, forcing him. Like, right. Jordan. You could tell. Messed, you you could tell that man did not want to be out there, man. Bro, Jordan Bernstein messed up one time. Was over. Take him off. It was. Just, it was just like the 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 margin for error was so. So it's small. so small for us. You can't you can't do nothing wrong. You got to be perfect just to even get an opportunity, and you may not even get an opportunity. But you Man, bet, but you bet not make a mistake in practice. You bet not do nothing wrong. Just like who? who all right, shout out to uh, Mike Daniels. Who was oh yeah, shout Mike? out to my brother. Say again. Who was over Mike Daniels before I came? It took somebody going down. Was it? Was it? Oh, uh, it was a uh, uh, Brodick Benz. Brodick Benz started in front of him. And, and like, it, uh, Brody Benz got a DUI. He got, ended up getting a DUI, and, and he got suspended for the first two games. And that's why Mike ended up starting. But Mike ended up going so crazy when he came, when Mike, when Brian came back, they couldn't, like, not start him. But they but they played him for, like, two years before that. They played him. They knew he should have been playing. But that's what I'm saying. There's just certain situations like that, bro. Like, that's the thing with football, bro. Like you said, yeah. it's necessarily, like, just the best person playing. It's, it's so many different circumstances at one. Yep. Timing, yep. luck, yep. you know what I'm saying? Opportunity, just yep. being prepared. Then you got people that's getting injured and people that's getting in trouble. Exactly. Facts, facts. So, man, talk about your transition to uh, and what went into your decision to finish your college, your collegiate career at the University of Towson. Were there any similarities or differences from Towson and the University man. of Iowa? Chat. <laughs> <laughs> Boy went back to the hood. 
<laughs> no more, no more train the table. No more your own cafeteria. Unlimited, unlimited juice and food and waters and. <laughs> Pamphlet. So look, so check this out. My decision was like, okay, you know, when when uh, Ferens gave me that ultimatum, I'm like, okay, cool, I gotta find schools. So at the time, supposedly it was if you transfer, going D one double A, you could play right away. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought it was. That's what I thought it was. But no, it's if you played two years. You no, know, if you had two years left, you can play right away. So I only had one year because I was going to my senior year. Yeah. So he told me misleading information. So I'm out to joint thinking I'm out to just, you know, play. So my first thought was, I'm going home to Maryland. So Maryland was in the ACC at the time. Yeah. I was like, you know what? You know, after everybody, you know, I'm about to go home to my hometown, get a championship and do it the right way. Mm-hmm. When I tried transferring to Maryland, they ended up transferring to the Big, Big Ten. So I was like, man, just my luck. Ain't just oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So I was, Thick. I was like, yo, <laughs> I was sick. So then I was like, okay, what's the, the, the next uh, best school? It's like Towson. I mean, me growing up, Towson always been like, it wasn't like the uh, a football school. You okay. feel me? I'm going to Towson. Then I was like, man, I just want to be home, yeah. close to family. Yeah. Bring, you know what I'm saying? I want to be legendary in my own city yeah. and bring to my city and show them, you know, Nico Law, you know, yeah. he, he the hype. So, um, time went by, and then prior to that, since I was leaving in the summertime, a lot of these coaching staffs were already gone. So I'm reaching out okay. to school, I hear nothing back. Okay. So I'm free. My life changed just like that. Yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. know, you got to go, you gotta be in camp doing doing something. Yeah, so yeah, I had yes. A less than a month to, to figure to, out to find somewhere to go. Yeah. Yeah, find some way it goes. So now I'm in a pickle, bro. I realized, bro, literally after the meeting with Coach Ferentz, I got my whip, packed my clothes, drove 15 hours from Iowa all the way home. Yeah. Life ain't that fast. Stressed out, depressed, I ain't hear no from nobody. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. All I see myself for the news looking crazy. Yeah. So um, you know, you know they paint that narr- that negative narrative, man. Yeah, bro, they was they was in that joint making it seem like I'm just what's up? Just crushing them, like, like, come on, yeah. bro, like, yeah, I was, high. I was, I was high when they stained my name like that, bro. I'm like, I did me dirty. I'm, I'm telling you, bro, it's, just, it's a dirty game. So look, I get um, uh, my boy, uh, you, you, you met my boy Rich, Rashad Rich. So Rashad Rich, he was, he was helping me trying to find schools at the time. So I was about okay. to transfer to Ohio and be a Bobcat. Okay. But, okay. The major I had at Iowa was some bullshit major. It was a uh, sports management, okay. but it was under studies. That major ain't transferred to no schools. Okay, you, okay. You know what I'm saying? So when I was trying to be a Bobcat, they was like, look, for you to come here, we got to recess you all the way to be, become a, a a sophomore. Then you got to oh, take occasion. Some, some crazy, wild, ultimatum. I'm like, bro. yeah. yeah. That sounds terrible. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to go to Towson. Towson's like, look, only thing you get here is a communication degree. I'm like, bro, I just want to play football. So, <laughs> bro, I, I go there. Matter of fact, I had a broken thumb. I get oh, yeah, to Towson. You know, they tell me, yeah, champ, you got to sit out a year. I'm like, what? It's like, in order for you to play right away, you got to have two years of eligibility. I said, well, my kid coach said, woo woo. They're like, well, your head coach wrong. So you got to sit out of here. So literally, bro, I go from Iowa where people, you know, they leave their doors open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people, people <laughs> their doors open. They greet you with so much hospitality. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I then I go to uh, Towson. My first day on campus, somebody broke into my car, stole all my, <laughs> stole all my stuff. You um, say he went back to the hood. <laughs> I get hurts on the campus and somebody got stabbed. Uh, so got robbed. Oh man! I'm, damn! I'm like, damn! Back, back, back in the city. Back oh, in the city. I said, "Damn, it's crazy." Then after that, since I went on scholarship, so now I'm not on scholarship because I got to sit out. Yeah. So the off season, I had to. Uh, I had to work. Yeah. You know, I, I had my first job. I was work. I worked at the Raven Stadium one time. Quit immediately. I seen one of my men on the field. I 
said, oh, no. <laughs> I, I asked you about that. Louis. Hey, look, Louis, he don't even know to, to this day, my man, Louis. He said, say you see your dog playing. He's like, oh, oh, no, oh, hell no. He was playing for the Ravens at the time, chap. Crushed my ego. I said, no, sir. I quit immediately. <laughs> I said, hey, look. Then you had I had to put my hat low to get out the field. I was like, this nigga can't see me. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, <I'll... laughs> bro, people, people don't be doing, bro. That that ego, bro. Yeah. No, when, hey, boy. When, hey, you, kill. when you go through stuff like that and you know you good enough, you know you should be there too, and you see your man shining, and of course you happy for your man. But yeah, yeah, but but with with the situation, working, it's not working the stands, the concession stands. Fucking weak, nigga. I said, because I quit so fast. I called my mom so quick. She's like, what's wrong? I said, mom, I fucked up. <laughs> I ain't going like that. I'm going to make it happen. Right. Hey, um, hey, hey, that's I real, bro. Odd jobs, bro. I had all these odd jobs. Um, um, I literally was going to school for the first time with no assistance. Yes. Um, they wouldn't even let me. Uh, get like the, the training book, the playbook. I couldn't even get the playbook to study because mm -hmm. it was against the rules. I'm like, y'all want me to be a star or what? <laughs> so I had a, I stole the playbook. I, I'm mm -hmm. like, need this joint. Stole the playbook. That's and then great. I had to train myself on the all season. Yeah. I trained myself on the all season until I could afford a real trainer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But the but the but the culture was different from you know, you go to Big Ten, 75,000 fans, so you go to uh, D1AA, it's like 500 people. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. It's, it's way, it's way different. The... <laughs> what the... Damn, where everybody at? Where everybody at? Hey, what, what time the game start? <laughs> oh, it's start now. Where everybody oh, at? Oh, it started at 8 o'clock, which is it's, it's 7.30 right now. <laughs> <laughs> What the people are? <laughs> hey, bro, that joint crush you. Now you only got that that same mm -hmm, energy. That same juice, that same energy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cause cause you get you get your momentum off the crowd. Yeah, That's what you do. Yeah. You fans, you feel me? Right. So I was making that um, another culture, uh, uh, a difference between big schools and smaller schools was. You know, I was spoiled with the food there. So when I yeah. came from, I came to Townsend. I'm the biggest person on the team. Man, I'm the biggest, fastest, strongest. They looking at me like, my God. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I would get steaks and potatoes every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. I get thousand. We eat Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey. we, we used to get fed too much food at Iowa. <laughs> man, look. Hey, I, I miss some training days at Iowa, but thousand. Oh, man. Thousand was Them training tables and big, them big ass steaks. Un unlimited states, you take all that shit home if you want, just all that stuff, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, then, it's, go ahead. When you were in Iowa, eyes always on you the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, we go walk to, you know, Pantura, like, oh my God, I seen an Iowa football player. Mm -hmm. I went to, I'm, I'm walking in Towson. They act like they don't know me. I'm like, this is different. Uh -huh. I said, uh -huh. oh, okay, different. It's, so then I used to being in the, the background, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Who's different? It was a huge yeah. call. Yeah. Huge. It's, 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 oh, yeah. it's always cool to hear, you know, just those differences from like a super big, uh, big, uh, you know, big five university and then, you know, like a smaller uh, Division One AA. It's always cool to hear those similarities. Go ahead. Discipline, too. Mm -hmm. The discipline was way different. You know, Iowa, we all uptight, tight as shit in the goddamn meeting room. I come to Towson. <laughs> Hey, look, I come to Towson. They, they, they cool. They, 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 they cool. They cool. I'm yeah. like, man, tighten up. The coach coming. You know, they cool. And it's real. <laughs> you know, Dude, Towson, you, Towson, you used to be a tight, cool. uptight with the coach because you can't be yourself. You can't relax. Yeah. So Towson, they look at me like, Dude, relax. What's wrong with you, bro? What's, yeah. You so uptight. Relax. Right, like, y'all right. ain't serious about football. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> facts. <you was> different. <laughs> No, yeah, that, yeah, that's fact, man. So, um, talk about. I know you had a had a brief stint in the CFL. So, if you can remember any, you know, anything about the, that opportunity, obviously after the NFL draft, I'm not sure which was draft you prepared for, but just talk about, you know, maybe did you hear from any teams during your draft process 
and then how you ended up getting the CFL opportunity. All right, so let's talk about Towson. So we're going to start like my senior year. So right before my senior year, I caught, uh, I caught Mono. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't catch a break. Okay. I caught Mono right before for the season. So I didn't even get to prepare for the season. Literally, like, right before our first game, we played a uh, ECU. I just got cleared. So I was just getting back into it. Mm-hmm. Played five games, and I broke my shoulder. Well, mm-hmm. opposite shoulder. I was already playing the whole season with a broken shoulder coming from Iowa. Cause Iowa lied to me and said, you know, my shoulder was good. And then oh, when but, I cranked her, they were like. ended up being broke. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's the whole number. You know, we can talk about that another time. But you know how it is so like. A lot of schools would tell you anything because you aren't knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. And when you get it from a higher source, you're going to believe them. So if the doctor tell me my shoulder not broken, I could just take these drugs and pills. I'd be mm-hmm. good. I'm going right. to do it. Right. They just want to save money because they don't want to put you through surgery. Right. But um, so played my five games, bro. I got – I broke my opposite shoulder, so I had a season-ending in, uh, uh, injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, got ready for pro day. Um and then I pulled my hamstring on pro day, bro. Ran like some crap. Ran like a four or eight. So yeah. I was about to jump over the a- bridge. I was <laughs> <laughs> over with Jeff. My dreams, everything done. I was about to jump off the bridge. Yeah, and then, um, yeah bro. So you had a season had- ending. You had a season ending injury after five games, and then you try to get back for pro day, and 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 you you pull your hammy down. Yeah, because I was too big. So you know how it is. Like you rush. You, I had a very short time frame to 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 come correct. Mm-hmm. So I was putting all this stress and I'm trying to get right. And I was in a situation that um, since I played half my season, I had a dominate pro day. Yeah, but course. my injury um, recovery time was like four to six months. Mm-hmm. And pro day was like four months away. Yeah. You feel me? So I was crunching a lot of stuff in a small mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Just, just, oh, just, to, just to get right for pro day. Yeah, and so I was stressed out, and I was, you know, real heavy. Cause they try to build me to be like a camp chance or Sean Taylor type. You yeah. feel me? It's only one of you know one of them. But um, long story short, um, after I had my uh, shortcomings with pro day, um, you know, I had to look in the mirror as a man and figure out what I'm gonna do from here. Am mm-hmm. I gonna keep going, or will I just fold and stay down? Yeah. And then you you think about the moment you was in, you know, signing your letter of intent, mm-hmm. what your end goal was. You think about all the stuff, mm-hmm. you know, all the trials and tribulations you went through mm-hmm. to get here. You're like, man, I can't, I, uh, I ain't going out like that. So, right, right, you're going to keep fighting. Yes, yeah, so I kept fighting. So yeah. I know you probably did the same experience. I'll end up hitting every freaking, so once I got my uh, hamstring right, end up hitting every freaking, um, CFL trial. I went yep. on a road, bro. Bro, I did I'm, the same. I did the same thing. I literally tried out for every CFL team. <laughs> I want a plan, bro. Hey, look, Pat, look, I ain't had no money, bro. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I literally went to every every CFL trial, bro, and, and I was actually destroying them joints. And then um I did a trial for Montreal mm-hmm. and I ran like a four, five, three at 220. Mm-hmm. So when I did that, I seen how they looked at me. I said, man, please. Yeah, and yeah, then, give me give me a shot. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm thinking like give me a shot. They they wrote down my information and then um I had a trial in what was my trial? My trial was in uh what do you call it? Um it was in Texas. Okay. My trial was in Texas. I was trying out for Saskatchewan, had a terrible trial, and I messed my knee up, and then I'm getting on the plane. To go home, and then mm-hmm. I get a call from a uh, Arizona number, and you know I, I I know a couple of homies from the team that's from Arizona and when they number, I'm like you know my bro Cody Sokol, yeah. he lived in Arizona. I got a couple of other homies that's out of Arizona, yeah. so I'm like thing like is it the Arizona Cardinals? Cause they was recruiting me. Okay. And then um, I answered the phone. I was like, hey, is this Nico Law? I'm like, oh, like, I'm like. <laughs> oh, 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 it's it. It's it. It's him. <laughs> this is my chance. This is my opportunity. Yeah, it's my opportunity. I'm thinking see, it's a car. I, I still got to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still got to it. So look, so I'm thinking it's the Cardinals, and um, oh boy, was like, hey, this is um, how 
how would you like to be a part of the uh, uh, Montreal Alouettes? Mm -hmm. And I just broke down crying, bro, because it just it felt like everything you did, bro, all made sense. It felt yeah. like everything you did made you just a dog, like for yeah, you to keep yeah. going. Yeah. And then a week later, packed my bags, went to um, went to Montreal. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and, and what was that yeah. like? Man, first of all, that it, it was it was definitely surreal. When you go in that locker room, you see all the guys you looked up to or watched on TV, y'all all in the same locker room. Yeah. And it's like that, that validation, like, dang, you know what J. Cole say, um, your idols become your competition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the real, idols become your rivals. What's my dog name? Uh, Noel Divine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah. Like, I, I remember him. I remember him. <laughs> I come in the locker room, I say Noel. What's up, champ? I'm like, yo, man, I used to watch, like, bro, like, who? Then they like, yeah, hey, Noel, Nico, you up next. I'm like, damn, I get the God is fast ass man. You feel me? Yeah. And, and then you start to realize how, you know, in, in Canada is different. It's not even about, um, it's also a numbers game in Canada because I think mm -hmm. they can only have, I forgot that. A, a, a certain amount of Americans, yeah. Yeah, it's a certain amount. It's like, a, what, 9 to 11? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's something like that, yeah. It might be less than that. I don't know, but yeah, I, it's, it's like know. it's like eight to ten or something. Yeah, it's a really small number. Yeah, so they gotta account for each position. So I'm out here. I'm like, dang. I'm like, okay, cool. I want to try and make no friends. I was strictly about you know my business, mm -hmm. but I also was already coming off of a a messed up hamstring. You know, how hamstrings are, bro. It's, they it's linger. Kind of, they linger. Yeah, linger. yeah. They linger. It's like you if you pull your hamstring three months ago. It, it's still like it's still right. yeah, yeah. somewhere. If you, if you try to explode and really run on it, yeah, yeah. So time went on. Um, you know, um, they, they had me play all different types of positions. I'm playing corner linebacker. Um, they even put me on line. So you know, the difference between uh the Americans and Can uh, Canadians is uh safeties in NFL are linebackers in the CFL. Okay. It's, a whole different vibe. The cornerbacks are, are the safeties and corners. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So came out there, um, seeing guys get injured. So they get injured, they get sent home. Mm -hmm. So they mess up, they get sent home. So I'm, I'm stressed out to be perfect. I'm like, I can't right, right. go back home. Right. I end up is actually Noel Noel Divine. He run four two four. I'm oh, running yeah. four five three. Yeah, so he I'm, had them wheels. That boy had them spinners. That boy, mm -hmm. that boy was down. <laughs> that boy, different gear. So I'm, I'm checking the wheel, and um, uh, he did like a, I think like a, a, a vertical, right? Yeah. So we running, and he, he hit another gear. So I'm trying to hit another gear. Boom, tweak the hamstring again. So you tweak yeah. the hamstring, and then you walking over the sideline. You can see all eyes on you. Like, oh, don't go to the sideline. Can nobody go on the sideline? Why? If you go to Salah, you are going home. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm just like trying to play it off. You get distraction. Yeah, go. Hey Nico, you come out here. Nah, hey, coach, I got a stretch real quick. Coach, I'm, I'm good. Right. I got oh, a yeah. stretch. Yeah. You did like three plays. What you doing, Nico? Right. Man, I'm just stretching, man. Just, just relax. I'm mm -hmm. stretching. Man, that, that hamstring is tough because you can't you can you can jog easily, but you you can't run and be explosive. No, you can't. Nothing when I have strength. At all. Yeah. At all. And, and then so, they hit you. And so, you know, yeah. You go back there to go eat, and they tap you on your shoulders <laughs> just like that, real good. <laughs> then they whisper, yeah. <laughs> coach, coach, want to talk to you. Oh, oh, and uh, bring, bring, bring your playbook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring your bring, bring, playbook. Hey, like, so like, I had my homies because I, I was doing good, right? So, so I had. I had my homies at the table, like, yeah, bro, you, they about to give you a fat contract. You dogging it. I'm like, nah, champ. Yeah, because you knew. And they yeah. seen. Because you knew your hamstring was messed up. Yeah. But the worst part is, man, as far as, like, the mental is, um, so now I told her Jim Pop. Jim Pop was, like, the head coach at the time. He's like, look, Nico, we're going to have to let you go home. Um, we're going to have you back. Just go home and get healthy. You're uh, one of the most athletic guys on the team. You can play literally any position. Mm -hmm. And right now it's a numbers game and you can't perform. So go home, get healthy, and we'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. 
So now you go from all this stuff, then you get on the team, and I go back home, I'm on my mama couch. Right, right. That, that's tough. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's where you started. You go all the way, all the way everywhere else, and you come right back. Come right back there. It's a crazy feeling. It's a crazy thing to have to do that. You feel like you're getting sun, like you yeah. a little yeah. little boy, like facts. Crush Hell my soul, bro. Crush my soul, bro. My dreams and everything, bro. I just feel like yeah. it just just depleted right in front of me. It's like yeah. one minute you you competing with you know the stars, and next minute you know it's you, all over. Yeah, you back home I'm trying to figure it out. And then after that, the worst part is every team tell you the same thing: keep grinding. You just waiting. Literally, when these mm -hmm. guys get cut from the NFL, you don't understand how much mental toll it is. Mm -hmm. It's no date. It's no nothing. You just got to go home, mm -hmm. keep working out, and calling your agent every day. Did you talk to somebody? Did you get me in the camp? Did you right. do this and that? And right. you just waiting. You ain't got no job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, I, I, I went through kind of the same thing. Just... Should I had to just like you say work a little in little odd jobs and and keep training because you know you still you still want to play so uh once once you got back to you know back to DC from your Montreal opportunity uh what what, what did you have to do until you know you kind of waited for your next opportunity to just like find find little odd jobs to work did you know after so long went by that you would potentially be done with the game like you know like like what was that like. So me personally, I always know I'd be an entrepreneur. So I always want to use football as a vehicle to do all the things I'm passionate about. So it was, hey, I'd be a superstar in football. I can act. I can model. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm creating non nonprofits to mm -hmm. to get you know uh, to help out the uh, what do you call it uh, the min minorities and the unfortunates mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh -huh. And also into real estate, but football was that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So when I got home, I mean, so when I got cut. You know, my mom, you know, everybody know that lives in D.C., the successful life is working for the government. So my mom was like, I might get a job with the government. I'm like, I'm not getting no job with no government. I'm not doing it. That's not, it's not yeah. me. I'm nobody. She's like, well, you got to get a job because you ain't going to just keep working out, <laughs> coming home and not making no money. Oh, yeah, you I'm know you, you, you know how it is. The parents start to get on you. You, you got to start helping with the bills and all this. Yeah. And I got to help with the groceries. And, and you, in and, and your head, you like, man, if I was, you know, you like, if I was making it, no, look, look, if I made it, you wouldn't be talking to me like that, man. Like, <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so, um, it, it was a huge transition, bro. So what I eventually did, um, you know, I, I started training people and, um, mm -hmm. I had specialism. So I, Right now, you you know, you're kind of aware of certain things you do, certain mannerisms and things that come out your mouth. So mm -hmm. I started training. Um, I wasn't as professional with it because I was still coming from a player point of view. You feel right, me? Right, right, right. So you had to learn that kind of on the go. Yeah, you got to learn the, the, the terminology, the language, mm -hmm. um, understanding coaching cues and stuff like that. So I was just doing all straight talent mm -hmm. and charging guys by the hour, so I already started my entrepreneurship hustle, mm -hmm. but it was consistent. Mm -hmm. Then I ended up going to the gym in Tyson's, play, uh, Tyson's corner called Tyson's Playground. It was a guy, shout out to my boy Leonard Stevens for giving me an opportunity. Um, he has this company called Perfect Performance. Um, my boy Rashad Rich, who was working at Perfect Performance, reached out to me. So I look, bro, I know you still dream chasing, we have an opportunity for you so you can still chase your dreams. You come work at a gym. You, you train our athletes. We provide you with the best physical therapy. You can train yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you can stay connected to the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what do you call it? Network more. Of so course. you find out. So in my head, I'm like, oh, that's perfect. Right. You know, at the time, it was, it was $20 an hour. It was disrespectful. But, you know, at the time... <laughs> When you get cut, all money, good money. Right, right. All money, good money. Right. <laughs> you, and they say $10. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, hey, you yeah. need hey, anything. Hey, you just need some money in your pocket. So I was I was working at the uh, gym, uh, $20 an hour. Um, and from there, that was the first um, building block of me actually becoming a trainer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't mm-hmm. it was something I dreamed of doing. It was more mm-hmm. so like I put myself in a situation in which I could chase my dream, mm-hmm. but I was putting my portfolio up while I was doing it. I right. was training league baseball players, uh, NBA players, um, track stars, mm-hmm. you know, and even doing hockey. Mm-hmm. And that's how that went. And then I, I started, I chased my dream. I gave it two years, tracing my dream from two years, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I was getting all these offers from Arena, bro. And it was, they was mad disrespectful, bro. And I was like, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah that, that Arena money ain't talking about nothing. I did two years of that. Yeah, hey, I don't know how you did. Like, I used to hit you up. Like, hey, Chad, what the check talk about? you like, look, bro, I ain't for the weak hearted. I'm, like, I'm like, nigga, I ain't weak, nigga. Like, you like, nah, bro, it's different, bro. <laughs> I'm look, telling you, bro. I'm telling you. The only, the only, man, the only reason to play for you to even want to play arena, man, is just to get some film for your agent. But that's the only, that's literally the only reason I play because yeah, the money not worth it. Your body you're hitting things in the walls. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's rough. I, I knew what time it was, bro. Cause my best friend, my, my boy Tail, man. Shout out to my boy Tail, man. He, he want to try and tell me the real. My like, yeah, bro. So how much I make? And he just like, bro, it's not even worth it, bro. It's. I'm like, but how much did you like? <laughs> <laughs> like, how much did you bring it home? He like, yeah, how much you bring it home? Bro and the joy talking about he got to find multiple jobs. I'm like, so you a pro <laughs> pro football player, and you got to get a job? <laughs> I'm like, man, that don't make no sense to me, champ. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro, that money, that, that is little, little pennies for real, bro. Right, like, bro is at the casino shooting his check off, man, going crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, but... um. So yes, so talk talk about like what kind of put the battery in your back to extend your business, you know, your your, your training business, Law Fit, and move it from you know the DMV to a bigger market like Los Angeles, California. Okay, so um, I don't want to sit here and lie and, and and say it was planned. I definitely want to say God works in mysterious ways, and whatever you had manifested since you were a little kid is gonna eventually come out. Same mm-hmm. with you been this this the show right now. Mm-hmm. It's something that's always been into you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even fashion, any any of your artistic ways, you was just born with it. So exactly. me, um, I was I always been a life of the party. I used to throw parties and events and stuff like that. So I always been like a creator. And um I was training guys, I was I was a promoter. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was promoting, throwing parties, and then I had a non profit. I started a non profit called Life Lessons coming out of uh college to um really target those athletes in need mm-hmm. and minorities yeah. and, and help them get education of the things they do not know because yeah. I went that and I wanted to give back right, and build. Right, right. right, get that game back. I was learning about nonprofits. I was just going bro and I was hitting so many hiccups. Mm-hmm. Everybody that was in my business was all my friends. That was a no, <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? And and I was just learning how to be a boss. Well, not a boss, just, you know, a uh, effective leader. You feel me? I was trying to learn how to be an effective leader. Um, It didn't turn out well. And I ended up also working at a school, an alternative school, in which I was a teacher. So I can mm-hmm. kind of funnel my nonprofit. Mm-hmm. But I lied to you not, bro. That was hard. Yeah. You go yeah. from being. TV to now you teaching kids. So like I always, you know, just like you, like you always wanted to impact kids and people with just from your platform. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. Uh, respect to all my teachers that's out there, right. you know, love, you feel me? But I'll never forget, um, I was at an alternative school. All the kids were just bad as hell, bro. Like giving me a headache, <laughs> you feel me? Like, <laughs> hey, look, I, already, I already know dealing with that kind of stuff. Dabbing teachers, you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, the kids come up to you, Mr. Law, you're a bitch. He like, yeah. he's like, hey, bro, you on the spot. You see the cameras everywhere. You like, look, Chad, hey. Yeah, hey. That's, a, that's a different kind of beast. Hey, that's a different beast. <laughs> so I remember waking up, bro, one day, bro, I was just frustrated because I felt like I was spinning my wheels, you feel me? Uh, not not um, getting nowhere. Not getting nowhere. My nonprofit wasn't moving. My parties was just stagnant because I didn't have much capital. Yeah, um, as yeah. far and I wasn't thinking business because I wasn't understanding branding. I was just thinking like, 
just train people. Mm -hmm. It was like branding. And then on top of that, I wasn't pushing um, my business on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the difference between East Coast and West Coast. East Coast is really like they off the grid with social media. They mm -hmm. really don't. You know, we we move, move in silence in the East Coast. It's not right. like. Right. More, like more, see, more, more silence in the West Coast for sure. Yeah, West Coast is like we. We promote everything we doing. Everybody got to know East Coast is different. Like mm -hmm, I wasn't mm -hmm. tapped into none of this social media stuff until I came out here. So long story short, I'm sent. I'm uh, awake. Awake. I woke up one day, and I looked in the mirror, bro, and I just had a breakdown. I was like, dude, like, what do Nico Law want to do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All my life have been a star, so it's just like you kind of yearn for, for that. That same plan, like yeah, yeah, you got to kind of figure, trying to figure out, like how you can reinvent yourself, but but do it, but like you say, but do it your way, do it doing something that you're passionate about. Exactly. So in my head, it's like I can't work for just a check. I want to get paid to do the things I naturally do. I want to mm -hmm. get paid to be. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit down and I had to think, like, dang, like, what did Nicola want to do? Hey, I want to act, I want to model. Mm -hmm. I want to you know, uh, uh, jump out there and try different business ventures. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the next move? I had a little bit of change saved up, bro. I was like, I'm even moving to Atlanta, mm -hmm. LA, or New York. Mm -hmm. Those are the three because entertainment is high on all three of them. Exactly. So I went, I literally, bro, for, for like a weekend, I went out to New York to visit my cousin, uh, Erica. She, Erica Lewis, shout out to Erica Lewis. I love you. Grits and Biscuit, <laughs> that's my family right there. Yes, but I went out and visited her, um, and it was a lit time, but I just said like how everything was congested and it was cold. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, New York is super congested, yeah. Yeah, and you know, coming from Iowa, bro, that was, woo! <laughs> you don't, you don't want to be in the cold no more. Hey, hey, I don't do no cold. Yeah. So then after that, it was between Atlanta and LA. So I got a lot of friends that was out in Atlanta. I got a family that's out of Atlanta. My cousins, mm -hmm. my aunt, um, they all live out of Atlanta. Um, some of my best friends from high school was living out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So it was like, go to Atlanta, safety net, or go to LA, drop your balls, go somewhere <laughs> by yourself, make yeah. a name for yourself. Yeah. And if you make it out there, you can make it anywhere because you're way more respected. Exactly. So. I literally told my mother, I said, Ma, I'm about to move. Yeah, like, what? I said, look, don't ask me no questions. I'm out, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm moving to LA. Yeah. She's like, what, what about your job? What about, Cause, hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out, mom. Like, I'm gonna I'm, I'm just figure it out. So I literally, yeah. bro, packed my bags with a week of clothes and hopped on a one way flight. Came out here and I was standing in Airbnb, and then uh, you know the rest is the rest is history. But it's a yeah. lot of stuff. Right, between. right, right. <laughs> you feel me? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, I I know I, I know about that LA journey. Uh, so I, I actually forgot to ask you, man. Um, talk about it, it, if you could ever remember. Talk about like the day or time when you consciously told yourself, like in your subconscious mind, that you were done playing football. Like that you knew that you would never strap it up again. And, you know, I, I can be honest and transparent. You know, it was a bad period of time for me. You know, it, it took me a while to get over it because, you know, I felt like I, I felt like I underachieved and, and I always been a super competitive guy and I always been super hard on myself. So the fact that I didn't make it, the fact that I never, that, that I didn't, that I didn't ever get a chance to put on that NFL helmet and, you know, compete at the highest level. Uh, like I say, I felt like I underachieved and, that's when all the negative thoughts start coming and then you start, you start thinking through, back through all the years. Did I do something wrong? Was I not a good teammate? Did I cheat on a rep? Did I not do this? Did I yeah. not do that? That's when all the questions start coming. So for you, um, was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Was, was, it a, was, it a, was it a long, was it an elongated period? If you could remember at all. Man, that's a beautiful question, bro, because I know we all face this as athletes when um, our careers come shorter than yeah. notice. Um, yeah. first thing I want to say is, I know you felt this pain before when you fall short of your dreams, bro. I got to the point I was hiding when I went home. When I got mm -hmm. cut. I had my head down. I didn't want Same nobody. Here. 
You know what I'm saying? I had a, a identity crisis in which, like, I didn't even know how to talk to people no more because I correlated my self identity with what I did for a living. Um, but um, that day took me a while, bro, because I was chasing for two years. It really happened when I came out to LA. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't posting. When I moved out here. I wasn't posting. I wasn't doing none of that stuff. Mm. And I started training. Um, uh, I never forget my homie CJ. Um, he's a trainer as well. Um, shout out to my boy CJ, fit legend. Um, he used to tell me all the time, post. Why don't you be posting your work, your training? Nobody knows that you're out here. In my head, I'm like, because I don't want nobody to know. Like, because mm. in the back of your head, you still got that, like, I'm not trying to change my title in which the world see me. Right, right. I'm still trying to. I still got my foot in it. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm right. still hitting up teams on the side. Like, I ain't done yet. Right, And right. Then it really took me to fall in love with training and, and also to fall in love with boxing. Mm -hmm. Boxing for that void. Mm -hmm. When I fell in love with boxing and um, I found something that I can learn that was relatively new to me mm -hmm. and something that gave me that same type of feeling of, I need to be great. I need to get better and better. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I started like really push away. And then the more and more I started getting into my business, mm -hmm. I started getting that same passion I had in sports mm -hmm. with for the business. With my business. Right. Then I started looking at business sport. Mm -hmm. Then I started studying business and sport. I started buying more business books. Mm -hmm. And I understanding just the little things and you know, just growing and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, the small nuances. I would, I would literally say at the end of my first year out in L.A. was my first year. So three years removed. It took me three years removed, bro. It was so bad, bro. Mm -hmm. I couldn't watch football. I used to be mm -hmm. sick. Yep. I couldn't watch football. For a long when time. People, I'm like, man, shut up. Man. I, don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't talk about football around me. I was just so, man, yeah. so hurt from my downfalls and my mm -hmm. shortcomings. Bro, they, they used right. to crush schools and I'm that. Especially, look, especially this is one of the hardest things. How many of your best friends playing right now? You go out and you, you remember when you used to get autographs, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everybody be like, oh, what's up, Mike? Go, go <laughs> side, get autographs. Mike, you looking at him like, oh, I yeah. thought you, oh, dang, I forgot. Yeah, Mike's <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Right, right. Mike, Mike, an NFL star. It's, 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 it's uh, it's crazy that you say that, man, because, you know, I, I went through the same kind of, like, identity identity crisis. And for me, like, like you say, man, we got we know so many guys. A lot of our former teammates and, and, and guys we played with in high school as well made the NFL. And so for me, it was I always kept thinking in my head, like, man, what can I do that's free? Like, you know, I'm, I'm not asking for no money. Because I would tell people stories about all these guys that I know and how tight we are and we kick it and we text and stuff like that. This, I, I started thinking like, man, what can I do, uh, you know, that's free and that's, that's, or, that's organic and it's authentic, you know, but it's valuable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so I, I just kept spinning my wheels for years, man, like coming up with stuff, but then like thinking it wasn't a good idea. Then I finally came up with this podcast. And when I was about to start, I was about to actually going to start it last November. Uh, then I took a loss. So I had to, I had to put it off again. But then when I find, finally came up with the idea, I started thinking like, okay, we all do have super powerful stories. Uh, a, a conversation is free. Sharing energies is free. It's something, you know, and, and it's just like, if I can get all the guys that I know who've been through all these different Alpha. stories and stuff like that, it's, it's a free thing, but it's a, it's, it's a powerful thing because, you know, it, it, could, it could potentially be something. So that's actually how I came up with the ethos for, for this podcast, man. So it's crazy that you say, like you say, going, just going through those identity crises and just trying to figure out, trying to stay pure you know, but still fighting them demons at the same time. Man. And then the crazy part is, is like when you fighting those demons, you fighting it, but everybody around you can feel it. And it, and it pushes everybody away from you. your friends, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your family, or, or your boys that, you know, playing at a high level. Like, yeah. in your head, you feel like <laughs> yeah. they don't see it. Exactly. And people can feel it. Like, man, he, buddy, act weird. I don't know, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. he ain't yeah. like yeah, they can feel that. They can feel that synergy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Facts, man. Facts. So, last question, man. 
what would you say is Nico Law's after effect? What through all through the 20 years of sports experiences, all the wins, all the losses, uh, your, your your experiences at Iowa, your experiences at Towson, your experiences in Montreal, what were some lessons that you learned that you will take and ingratiate, you know, into your future offspring, into your future family, as we continue just to try to push this culture forward? Man, my biggest thing, man, that I definitely want to say about this because, uh, you know, uh, going through all the things I went through, um, it was times that I lost myself. Um, I want you guys to understand that you are one of one. Mm -hmm. There's a person like you. Mm -hmm. And that essence, that's power. So whatever you do, don't change yourself. You know, better yourself, improve yourself, but understand that you are one of one. Mm -hmm. Understand. Like people can have the same business as you, but at the end of the day, they not you. Exactly. So be comfortable with who you are. Um, be un unapologetically you. Exactly. I mean, I, yeah. I could, and I, I could totally attest to all that, man. Uh, where anybody watching or listening, where, where, where can they find you at on social media? Where can they find your, 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 your business? At? I know you're doing super big things in the fitness industry. Um, you can find me at. You can find me on IG. I'm Nico Law, so I A M N I C O L A W. Mm -hmm. You can also follow my business page at Law Fit, so L A W F I T um, underscore. Law Fit is actually like a, a lifestyle and health uh, lifestyle brand mm -hmm. and fitness brand at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I reside in North Hollywood. I'm always on the go. Um, I'm rarely on Facebook. I'm definitely on a uh, uh, what's that, what's that what's that new thing uh, Clubhouse How, uh, Clubhouse TikTok or nah Clubhouse Clubhouse oh, oh that's a new social media yeah I'll be on Clubhouse oh, okay I'm not even hip to it <laughs> yeah you got Clubhouse that yeah 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 okay. that's free game okay TikTok, on TikTok like that somebody run my TikTok for me yeah I'll be on it uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do the Twitter yeah yeah I'm on the Twitter I'm terrible but yeah, yeah. tap Make sure y'all follow me, man. Okay. I'm open. I will talk, discuss Definitely. whatever you want to talk about, exchange ideas, and come together to do something impactful for the community. Definitely, definitely, man. Well, this was a super, super powerful conversation, bro. I, I appreciate you carving out the time. One thing that I've been trying to pride myself on, like like we said earlier, 2020 has been the weirdest year. We've had to pivot in so many different ways with COVID, yeah. with COVID, and the racial. Uh, injustices and you know we just never know when we'll see each other again so i want to tell you man face up man to man that i'm super proud of you bro all all, all the accolades all the accomplishments you know the the world thought to keep fighting you know eat, you know through all the disappointments and stuff like that man Su super proud of you bro and i just want to give you show you that love and give you your flowers you know while we both still here and I, I can still spew you know that kind of love out man i appreciate that bro love you dog Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Late, too, bro. So, yeah, man, that, that, that's all I had, man. Be safe. Happy holidays, man. I, again, I appreciate, I appreciate you carving out the time. And we, 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 we'll be in touch, man. I'm, 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 putting, some, I'm, I'm putting something together. I'm kind of doing, I, I want to do like a round table tour. So I'm doing my first round table in my hometown of Cleveland in a couple of weeks, right after Christmas. Then I'm doing a round table here in Atlanta. And then I want to do a round table uh, out there in LA. You know what I'm saying? And I'll probably yeah, we happen. definitely make something happen. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. So we'll definitely collaborate on that. And, uh, yeah, man, ex ex excited for, for newer things to come, man. So, again, I appreciate you carving out the time. And we'll be in touch, brother. All right, my brother. <laughs> All right, man. Peace. Hey, how was that? That was great. <laughs> hey, that was shot, man. I ain't gonna hold that was shot. <laughs> hey, that, hey that, that was all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nah, I'm about... nah, I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. Like for real, man. I appreciate the. Uh, I, you know, I, I would have been on that motherfucker a little bit longer, <laughs> but I appreciate the support, bro. You feel me? You've been fucking with me since I came out here when I first started training stuff. It was something new for me training regular people, mm -hmm. and you, you know, um, bro, came to support me. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I wasn't making shit. I'm talking about three jobs, thirty k. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, bro. I wouldn't, I, I wasn't making shit either. I was, I was, I was truly, truly, truly struggling. Like the worst struggling I ever was in my adulthood, bro. But I, I just made sure I tried to check my energy and made sure 
people that I was, was interacting with couldn't tell that I was really going through some dark, hard times out there, man. <laughs> so I, 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 I just, I also want you to know too, bro, as we get older, life is short. So you can always be vulnerable with me. And, and I'm learning that too. Cause you know, we got egos as men. Like we, I'll be like, nigga, I ain't gonna tell no nigga I'm broke, nigga. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> right, you know right, what I'm right, right. But I want you to always feel that you can reach out to me about anything, about money. Oh yeah, oh yeah, about, no doubt, man. Like, straight forward, you feel me? Cause it was the time of my life, you know, like nigga, Kirksey was my best friend. One of my best friends. I was, man, nigga, nigga worth 60 mil. I'm like, nigga, I, I can't call this nigga, ask him for no yeah. money. Yeah. But yeah. it shouldn't be like that. Right, I agree. You know, your men is your men. At the end of the day, brothers is brothers. And you know, you 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 are put on the earth to impact each other and 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 feed each other families. Man, I, I I totally agree, bro. I totally agree. But you know, like we talked about in our conversation, man. We we athletes, we fighters, man. You know, we uh, at the end of the day, we always gonna figure it out some way, somehow. Right. Well, all right, right. bro. I, I I'll definitely tap in with you and let you know. Um, it would probably take like a week or two for my editor to edit everything, but I'll let you know when everything is posted, man. I appreciate how much your editor, time, bro. How much your editor be in charge? He, he out here or Atlanta? Nah. So my editor is like in, I found him on, on social media. He's like in Japan. So I, I literally just send him the content and then have him edit it. Uh, so that's, so even when I do the round tables, all, I, all I'm going to need is like a shooter, somebody to shoot it because I, I, I have him edit all my content because he know what I'm looking for as far as ethos and transitions and shit like that. Uh, okay. Cool. But yeah, I pay, uh, I, I pay him like a monthly fee. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's like, I think, I think it's like 20, like 20 per episode or something. But I, I just, I, I send him money every first of the month. And like, so we, we've been rocking for like six months now. All right. Well, if you can, uh, so I'm looking for an uh, editor. So I got a couple of projects. I'm okay. trying to, so my, my podcast is like yours, but not like yours, as in like I'm trying to do all walks of life. I'm I'm trying to literally any nigga I pass. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, that's dope. Person. That's creative. Yeah, like any person I pass, you know, in my walk of life, mm -hmm. boom, what do you do now? Boom, boom, boom. How did I first meet you? Yeah. What was the energy back then? Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I would say even even something like that. Maybe maybe having like a co-host or a uh, like like a a female, you know that 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 could create some, that could create some yeah that, yeah that could create some perspective because I'm actually looking now, I'm searching for like a former female athlete, you know that that can jump on like a couple episodes as a guest as a guest host and just create that different perspective. Nah, facts. I'm gonna figure it out. But I also man, I also want to, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. It took me. From being in the shadows this long, it took me forever to hop back in front of the camera. That shit's the hardest shit. <laughs> Once you do it, yeah, you good. I, Cause like you used to being in the like I'm used to being in the shadow. Like my girl all the time, she be like, "Dude, you funny as shit." Like you, yeah, like yeah. You got a TV personality. Like you need to really like push your shit. Yeah, and I be like, "Man, chill, man. Get the camera on my face, man." <laughs> okay. Yeah, and and shit for me. It's kind of like, uh, you know, even me doing this virtual, the virtual podcast with the Zoom, shit, we, I'm, I'm, I'm in front of the camera, but, you know, I'm being me, I'm being natural, but it's still kind of practice, just me hosting, me making sure that I'm connecting with people for them to answer the questions, like, we get, with good answers and all those kinds of things. So it's all, it's, it's, it's all practice, but like, like we talked about earlier, it's all organic because this is kind of stuff that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about our stories, our athletic stories, our athletic journeys, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's natural. It comes off supernatural. Nah, fact, fact. Yeah. Definitely appreciate you, bro. Hey, uh, when I get off the phone, I mean, I'm not sure if you cool. I was gonna say, I, I, I was gonna like tag you, um, you know, tag or you, you got like a blank. Well, you don't want me to say nothing about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do what you want. Like I said, um, the episode is episode 35, so it'll be, it'll be, it'll be ready probably in like another week or two, once I send it to my editor. And then once I have everything posted, yeah, I can, I can send you all the info. Then you can start tagging it on, on, you know, yeah. for the, on all the podcast apps and YouTube and all that. But it, I'll probably need like another week for him to edit it and everything. Uh, that's so bad. And um, look out for, so like my loft, I um, want you to look out. So what I'm doing with that is, uh, 
you know, I believe in just a healthy lifestyle. Even when, when me and you was talking, how you lost all that weight, mm-hmm. change your body to the best you ever look in your life. Mm-hmm. So with my clients, it's not all about, so I've been targeting now, but CEOs, pro athletes and celebrities, right? So yeah. me, it's not all about just how your body look. It's the mind, body, and soul. So yeah, yeah, definitely is. Um, I'm, I'm also just changing it to like apparel, like kind of like apparel brand. You ever seen a dark sports? Uh, dark sports. What's that? That's like a show, or it's like it's it's a, a apparel line. Okay. So I'm just I'm just letting you know heads up. I'm gonna have a lot of a lot of drip coming. So I'm be sending you stuff like that, and uh, everything I do is law. So just that that integrity, that empowerment, yeah. that brotherhood, that Rick Ross type vibe. You feel? Yeah, yeah. That, you know? that yeah. That's that that's what's up, bro. It's it's funny you say that because I'm actually developing something like that for myself. Like I. My my schedule is too busy, so I, I don't I don't really want to be a trainer, like to to the point where like I gotta have a lot of clients. But I want to create yeah. I want to create a lifestyle brand because I work I literally work out six to seven times a week, <laughs> and like Not- I, it's literally a part of it's it's a part of me it's a part of my schedule. So I was like I start thinking like okay, everything that I wear to the gym hoodie t shirt short socks yeah. and then and then everything that I use. You know, my workout bag, all the little bands that I use to warm up Dude. with, foam roller, uh, uh, straps, you know, just all the stuff that I've been using for years. Yeah, I'm like, I can literally just create all that shit of my own, like, and sell it. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, bro, nigga, when I saw putting my merchandise up, nigga, nigga, I'm like, damn, nigga, I've been fucking up all these years. Nigga, I've been... Especially I'm now, pretty- especially now, like now is the time to do it because everybody buying black. Everybody looking for for a black business to buy from. So it's kind of like it's it's like it's a perfect thing. <laughs> it's perfect, bro. And then yeah. um to piggyback with you on the training stuff. So people be thinking from social media, I train a lot of people. They're like, bro, I made it so that I charge high. Mm-hmm. So I don't need a lot of people can't afford me, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. since a lot of people. For me, if I change charge three to five people a day, that's mm-hmm. down there. Stop. Exactly. I ain't and, got and out there, and, and, and out there in LA, like depending on depending on what your clients do for work is like like they they consider that a good price because they trying to take their 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 health and their wellness serious. So it all makes sense. Yeah, nigga, nigga like me ain't gonna be training twelve hours a day, nah, nigga. We <laughs> I got four hours in me for y'all, and I gotta do my own shit. Then exactly. I got my, do. Exactly. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, nah, but yeah, man, we'll yeah, we'll definitely stay tapped in and just bounce ideas off each other and, and continue to elevate, man. All right, bet that, bro. Hey, and 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 then uh, if you got any opportunities for uh, acting and modeling, bro, definitely send me because I'm doing the um, told you I was doing the bodybuilding shit. That mm-hmm. shit take shit. This body, I shouldn't say that on the podcast. I mean, fuck it. But the bodybuilding shit, that shit crucial, man. That All shit. Right. Uh, uh, I'm already, I'm already knowing. I'm. I, I don't, yeah, I can't see myself doing the bodybuilding. I mean, obviously, I love fitness and all that, but I kind of just want to look fit and abs. And, you know what I mean? Like, I'm doing a like physique cut, like I'm cut and lean. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a physique, though. I ain't doing a swole swole there. Oh, okay, okay. So you're going to be super lean, okay. super shredded. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's what's up, man. Keep going. <laughs> all right, brother. All right, dog. Be safe. All right. All right.